Hello, I'm Dustin Bond, and uh, this is the final episode of Conversations with Jack, the man in the chair. And as you can tell, I'm the interviewer today. And today we will be interviewing Jack Randall Earls, PCPH board member and actor extraordinaire. Jack, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you, Dustin. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate you. you doing this. Well, I appreciate you talking to me. Uh, you know, for our first question, Jack, I'd like to ask you, what was your first production at Putnam County Playhouse, and, and how did you get involved with it? Well, this happened back in the summer of 1979, and I had a friend, I was working with a friend at the dance workshop, I think we were teaching di disco dancing lessons, oh. and she read a notice about an audition for a musical at the Putnam County Playhouse. And she wanted to be in it. She wanted to be in it. Would I please audition with her because they were looking for dancers? Well, I was sure they were not going to be looking for disco dancers for <laughs> an evening with Cole Porter. But well, I said, yes, you never know. I'll go. I'll go. So the auditions were in the basement of the Goban Church. And we got there. And we had our cassette player and our number. We did our number. And I, you know, scouted things out and figured out which person was the director. Mm -hmm. It was Evelyn Robbins. So after we did our thing, mm. and Joni Skaggs from Stylesville was the choreographer, okay. and she had us do a few steps. Then uh, as everyone was leaving, you know, me being me, I walked up to Evelyn and said, what, what songs are going to be in this show? And she started naming some songs, and she said, but I don't think I'm going to use the Heaven Hop. Because, and I said, well, I think that's a good idea. I don't think anyone will miss it. I, I think that's a good idea. So then I left. So I got cast in the show and my friend didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which was very interesting. It was fun. We did it at, uh, that was at McAnally. Okay. It was also Mark Adams' first show at the Putnam County Playhouse. And it was, uh, it was just great fun. And I enjoyed it very much. We danced a little bit, through, picked some girls up and walked them around the stage. And I thought, you know, this is... Uh, I, 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 can, I can do this. Yeah. I can do this. And the rest is history. Here we are. Or mystery. Or mystery. Well, yeah. Case may be. Yes. <laughs> um, well, well, who are some of the directors you worked with in your first years at Putnam County Playhouse? Evelyn Robbins, of course. Oh, okay. Uh, my second production was directed by a young man named Mark from the DePaul University because we did a, a, a Rogers and Hart, a celebration. And Ann Cooper and Swanson had asked me to come in and do the choreography the next year. And I said, Psh, I'm there. And he, he was very good. And we did that at Moore Theater. I thought, this is Broadway. You know, <laughs> I, this is great. I love this. And uh, of course, a couple of years later, we got the property. Mm. And we moved out here. And my, my cousin, Lita Sandy, was going to direct, was going to choreograph Oklahoma, directed by Vicki Parker. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, come along and audition. And I thought, I'm there. So I auditioned, and I got the role of Slim, which I couldn't play now, <laughs> but I could play then. And the first day of rehearsal, Vicki Parker said to me, would you like to be my assistant director? And I said, yes, yes. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what I would be doing. But I said, yes, yes, I will. <laughs> so. Uh, that was the first year, 1981, first year oh. house on the stage out there. And then I did some lights, <laughs> climbed the pole and <laughs> did the lights on a paint scaffolding for Jim Poor's production of Mary Mary, which I loved. Mm. And uh, the next season then I worked with Vicki again as her AD uh, for The Sound of Music. And, it, it, and then we moved in the barn. I worked with Vicki as her AD for Kiss Me Kate. Now, all of these shows, I also played small parts, mm -hmm. except The Sound of Music. There really wasn't anything for me to play in that. But I, I watched, you know, every chance I get, I would watch to see what Vicki was doing. I would watch what she was writing, look the way she made her schedules, and how she talked to people, and how she let people go, how she delegated uh, jobs, how she didn't have to be a one person a one-person band, mm -hmm. you know, and she, she, but in the end, it was her show, 
because she made it happen. She put together all the moving yes. parts, and yes. Vicki Parker is very good at that. Yes. She is a yes, wonderful is. director. Yes, and I guess probably uh, Jim Poor. Of course, I've worked with Jim Poor. Mm -hmm. He directed me in in a lot of shows: Showboat, uh, Prisoner of Second Avenue, uh, The Sunshine Boys. Okay. And it's again, I kept my eyes open. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can learn a lot. You don't have to come to rehearsal if you're not on stage sitting and read a book. You can look around and see what's going on. You can pick up you a can lot always, of stuff. Yeah. Even if it's, oh, I'm not going to do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which we have found sometimes yes, has to be the case. Yes, sometimes that's to be the case. But yes, I just looked and watched. And those are probably the two people, the two directors who influenced me the most. Although certainly I've enjoyed working with others or mm -hmm, Ford. Of course. And, and and, and and some others. Shelley McFadden. Shelley McFadden is a, is a really McFadden, good. Yeah. Brad Sandy. I've just been very lucky. Oh, yes. Been we're very, lucky we're very fortunate here. And, and you as a director, I mean, learning all that, but I mean, coming into your own as a director, you're a wonderful director yourself. You're among the tops in that. I so, try. I try. Well, I try. you succeed. You succeed. <laughs> uh, when, well, while we're on that subject, when did you start directing at <laughs> PCPH? Well, I had been Vicki Parker's assistant director for three years. Mm -hmm. So I knew everything there was to know about directing a musical. I mean, there's no, no one could teach me anything else. So <laughs> when it came time for someone to direct a musical, it's, yeah, it's, right, I of would, course, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Pajama Game in 1984. Huh. <laughs> I was very fortunate that I had a good cast. Mm. And Anne Swanson as the musical director. We, I had Sandy Robles and Lonnie Brumfield, and Sherry Davis, and Jim Poor, mm -hmm. and just uh, an outstanding cast, Carol Birdsell. Mm. Oh. And the musical numbers in that show are so lively. They, they, they just almost choreographed themselves. And so I just got out of the way. Now, we, we had five performances <laughs> of shows at that time. And we'd, also, we'd done Annie that year, and we had to do six or eight performances of Annie. No, of course. We didn't have to do any additional performances of the pajama game. <laughs> and Annie sold, you know, yeah, 1,500 tickets. You're sold out probably every yes. night. Out of performances. Uh, uh, pajama game <laughs> sold 548 tickets. <laughs> but it was a learning experience, mm -hmm. and I had a lot of fun. So that's... So, and from then on, you know, I was looking for a show, shows to direct. Right, yeah. was, well, once you do it, you know, I mean, it's, there's no other, while it's nice being on stage, there's no other feeling like, no. like directing and putting something together and then, and then seeing it come out the way that you have mapped it out, so. And you, e even, even those shows that don't come out quite, there are always moments that were just as you pictured them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the ones that are not are your fault. Right. It's not, not the fault of the people. No, no. You just didn't convey your The buck your stops idea there. The buck stops here. You, you, someone had told me, <laughs> during, me, during rehearsals, someone would say, well, why don't, I, I think that this should be done this way. And I always say, well, when you pr direct your production of this play, you can you do, do it that way, way, but there's not time to put your name in the program as the director, so we're just going to have to do it this way. <laughs> people need to learn to trust their director. Trust your director. Uh, well now, you've done a lot of plays over the years, and well, just shows in general over the years. Um, not only directing and, and, and assistant directing and helping out, but also being on stage. Do you have a favorite play performance that you've, you've done? Well, you know, it's trying to figure out your favorite child. Uh, Jim Poor directed The Prisoner of Second Avenue, which I did with Peggy McLean. Mm -hmm. That was one of my first leading roles, and that was that was a joy. The Sunshine Boys as well, that I did with Don Collins, directed by Jim Poor, also another joy. <laughs> uh, probably my favorite, my favorite performance in a play was in Never Too Late, directed by Shelley McFadden. McFadden, and. Kenny Buchanan and I had a drunk scene. I know it very well. Way. And yes, you were in that. You were had the misfortune to be in between us. Exactly. <laughs> you sometimes had to leave without your hat, Mr. <laughs> Policeman. But it was <laughs> it was very funny. And of course, I got to play opposite the beautiful Diana Callahan huh? yes. as my wife. How hard can that be? Mm. 
you know. And it, it, it's just a funny, sweet play. It's mm -hmm. my favorite kind of play. It's hilarious, but it has a heart. Mm -hmm. and, and that's probably my favorite play performance, although there have uh, been many. I remember that one. You did a, you did a wonderful job playing the, the dad. I remember when I was, I was the uh, handyman, and then I was also the police officer, and I just remember <laughs> sitting on the couch with Diane uh, Callahan, and we're going through the, the plans and everything, and then we <laughs> hear you yelling <laughs> backstage, and your voice just carried <laughs> And you had that character down. It was great. And you're, you and Kenny's drunk scene. Oh my, oh my goodness. It was, it was, the, you had the audience rolling. And uh, every, every night that scene would just get longer and longer and longer well, because of the you laughs. Give, you give the people what you, they yeah, want. Exactly. <laughs> and they, they certainly got it, too. <laughs> in, in that same vein, do you have a, a favorite musical performance? Oh, hmm. Well... The sing being the singer I am, I don't get a, in a lot of musicals. I, I get small non-singing roles, or I'm in the chorus, and sometimes Ann Cooper used to say, now everybody sing this, and Jack, just move your mouth. <laughs> and I would go, okay. But I didn't. No. I, just, I, just, I snuck a few notes in there anyway. Uh, but the man in the chair mm -hmm. in The Drowsy Chaperone, directed by Charlie McFadden, McFadden yeah. Uh, uh, that part spoke to me from the moment I heard the original Broadway cast CD. And I thought, this, I know this man. Mm -hmm. I know this man. And I know that our audiences will love this guy if they get a chance. Mm. If I do it correctly. And... You know, there's a lot of breaking of the fourth wall in that play. Yeah. You talk to the audience, they talk back. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was just a joy to play. And the rest of the cast was outstanding. Uh, Megan Armitage, Brad Sandy, Cameron Callan, uh, Destin Bond, and Tori Pierce, uh, Sarah Armitage. Uh, ro no. Uh, not da David. Uh, oh, David Roberts. David Roberts. Yes. Uh, and the a young lady from Brazil. Came Julie over. Uh, Krimke. Julia Kr Kripke. Kripke came yeah. over. Uh, Tammy Hunter. Mm -hmm. Lee Reberger. Uh, I could just. You could I, go on I, and I on. It was a wonderful everybody. cast. If there was a perfect cast, that was it. Oh my goodness, and I laughed every night. Mm. And Deb Grammel did the choreography. <laughs> it was. It was so funny. Uh, yeah, and, and that's another show that grew. Oh, yeah. And, and the audience loved it. You know, I will say this, if you, love me, if you allow me to interject on this, I think the, the relationship that you connected with, with that audience, and I don't think it could have been done by anybody else. You were, you were the man in the chair. You became the man in the chair. Uh, you made it your own, and you connected with the audience on a level that I don't think... Uh, anybody else could have done and it was just it was perfect every time and then also on uh, and I, I, I you've been a part of the uh, playhouse for many years so I know this isn't going to be uh, your uh, later on question answer but so I'm just going to bring it up now I remember trying to to break you a little bit during our um, pickup rehearsal we always have a pickup rehearsal during the second week to try and knock off the rust and uh, you're mentioning something of the, your phone rings and I decided to see if we could we could get you um, by pretending to be your mother, <laughs> and you yes. didn't miss a beat. Nope. You were on it, and you just went right to it. Hey, that was that was the man in the chair. That was the man in the that, chair. But yes, your telephone calls that you recorded for the show. Uh -huh. before, I, I don't know no, you did them live. I did those live. Oh. <laughs> I did those live. <laughs> That's another touch. I, I. I like that, I would do that show. If I could, oh if man! The same director, same cast. Same everything. I, I, I could, I would still be doing that show. Mm -hmm. It was, it show. was wonderful, and and our audiences really oh, enjoyed the it. The audiences they, were tremendous. Now, um, I, I know this will make this longer, but uh, I have to ask you this, and a spoiler alert for those of you who don't know the show. But at the end, do you think that that was the man in the chair passing on? See there. Uh, there was a lot of speculation in the cast about whether or not that was just the man in the chair passing on there at the end, or, 
or just an, a, a, a tear-jerking end. But tear -jerking I, well, I think suddenly the musical comes to life, and he's involved in it, and they're speaking to him. During the rest of the play, he stands right beside them talking, and they take no notice mm -hmm. of him. At the end of the play, suddenly they're singing to him, they're talking to him. And he and gets I, on the plane. And he gets on the plane to go. I, I, I don't think he's passing, although I can certainly see how that could be interpreted that way. I think he finally just, <laughs> there, there was an old Twilight Zone once where uh, the character used to watch himself in old movies. And they came to find him, and he wasn't there. He was up on the screen. And I think that the man in the chair finally just went on the record. <laughs> he got to be on the record. So if anyone else who played that record, oh, he would be there. Mm -hmm. he, he wanted it so much, he got it. Yeah. Well, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And I know that in that moment, I, as Shelley said, and I know our audience, you know, I mean, she was always in tears when she got to, when, when you started singing with the, with well, the that happens <laughs> often when I sing. <laughs> well, that's not exactly what I meant, but, <laughs> but it was such a touching moment, and I know that the audience enjoyed it, too. So you, were, well you were fantastic oh, for thank that. You, so. That was such a well-written show, top to bottom. Now, um, what, what would you say that the Putnam County Playhouse has meant to you? Oh, you know, I come from a large family. I have four brothers and three sisters, mm -hmm. so I don't remember a time when I wasn't surrounded by a crowd where I didn't have somebody to put on a show with. Mm -hmm. And I, we've, I, we've, I put on shows from the time I was five years old. You can ask my brothers and sisters. They were always being roped into a production. And so this really has just become an extended family to, to me. A and as my family got older, some of them moved away, you know, they got married, they had children, and, and so their interests changed. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't get them to do a show with me anymore. And so coming here, particularly with working this, with the same people year after year, it, it, it's like your family. It gets to be like your family. You have good times, you have bum times, as Stephen Sondheim says, mm -hmm. but mostly you, have, mostly you have good times. And you know, this place is like Oz. People come and go very quickly. You have people for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and then their life circumstances change, and they move on. Or they come here to fulfill a certain something for themselves, and once they find that elsewhere in their lives, they don't need us anymore. Mm -hmm. So we see them come. We see them go. We often see them in the audience yeah, after that's that. that's true. Uh, but it's like a family. This is really uh, just my big extended family and I, I have such wonderful warm friendships and relationships here that I cannot imagine my life without it. Mm. I'm right there with you. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more, Jack. <laughs> uh, so do you have any um, amusing anecdotes about something that happened on or off stage? Something that of course you can share with our audience. Well, <laughs> well, I'll use the most recent one that really amused me, anyway. Mm. In 2018, in Annie, directed by Shelley McFadden. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. It's Caroline Good. Oh, that's right. That's the second that's time, the second time, time that. you've done that's that. That's the yeah. second time I've done that. Caroline, he Caroline, does love you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well directed. Well done, Caroline Good. I, I keep thinking. Anyway. Anyway, in 2018, when Caroline Good directed Annie, and it was Lisa McCoy's first show. She was playing Grace Farrell. Mm -hmm. And Caroline Good at the same time was doing uh, The Glass Menagerie. She was oh, doing yes, Amanda yeah. in The Glass Menagerie at Walbice College. So she said, would you take a few of the early rehearsals? Would you be my assistant director? Well, <laughs> I'm there. You know, you just have to ask me. So when she was down there doing that, I would conduct some of the rehearsals. Mostly it was, we did a lot of singing then. And... Uh, you know, I would put my two cents worth in, which is what Caroline told me to do. Mm -hmm. And I continued to do that when she came back. I would say, well, perhaps you should do this, or perhaps you should do that. And the, the dress rehearsal before we opened, we were sitting over there on house left, and Lisa McCoy was sitting here, and Chris Worcester was here, and we were talking. And I, I was talking to Chris, and, and Chris asked me about a particular 
movement or bit in the show. And of course, he was doing it fine. And I said, well, you know, I like that, and we're doing this. And uh, Lisa McCoy said to me, why, why are you telling people what to do? Why are you telling people what to do? And I said, well, <laughs> I, I'm the assistant director. Caroline said that I could do that. She goes, oh, I didn't know you were the assistant director. I said, well, what did you think I was? And she said, I just thought you were a really bossy cast member. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I can be that too. <laughs> In this particular production, I am the assistant director. At this point, you've got permission. You yes, I have permission to be a boss <laughs> cast member. But that, that amused me oh, yeah. to no end. Well, <laughs> then, there you go. A new, newbie, not knowing. Everybody else is just, yes. ah, it's Jack being yes. Jack. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's just Jack. Yeah, listen or don't. <laughs> oh, that man. That, that was a good show, though. That was a very yes, good show. Yes, yes. And Caroline... Caroline, oh, good. <laughs> did a very good Directed job. That. With it. Thank you. Caroline. So, well, uh, Jack, the uh, last question I have for you is: um, uh, When you get to theater heaven, uh, what do you hope to hear the director say? Well, I hope he says, "I hope he says, you were always on time. You always knew your lines. You could find your light, and people had." A good time working with you. And Ernie Ford wants to do a few more performances of The Odd Couple if you're up for it. <laughs> and I would go, yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm sure that is, that is what you'll hear. Uh, well, Jack, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, not only doing this interview, but uh, the countless other interviews uh, that we have done over this uh, course of 16 episodes. This is the 16th and final episode. And I, um, as the director producer, I, I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am to, to you. You've made this uh, easy, an easy project. And I, I think that um, you know, not only does the board appreciate your efforts, but also uh, the viewers. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thank you, Dustin, for all the hard work you did, too. And lastly, I'd like to thank all of those supporters of the Putnam County Playhouse who have been with us from the beginning. Those people who continue to come and see our shows, those people who visit our website, those people who keep our Facebook pages moving, all those people who participated in our shows, everybody that makes the Putnam County Playhouse what it is. It's not just a place. It's not just a barn. It's, it's a family, and it's a place where you can come and forget about what's happening there and worry about what's happening here. Make everybody feel better for a little while. Thank you so much for watching these uh, shows. I appreciate it so much. I feel that I've gotten to know people that I thought I knew very well. I think I know them even better. And please, please support local theater, support the arts, and thank you very much from the bottom of my heart to you and from the Putnam County Playhouse.